Hi, this is Rui Nogueira and Krasimir Semerjev. And welcome to the Zapana Cloud Platform podcast. And in this podcast, we want to br- provide you with mainly two things. So actually giving you an overview what was going on in the past weeks around Zapana Cloud Platform and what will be interesting in the weeks coming um, in front of us. And um, together with Krasi and maybe other colleagues of mine, um, during the next couple of months, we want to ke- keep you updated of what is going on in the Zapana Cloud Platform world. Awesome. So uh, let's just go ahead and start with um, the what's up section of this uh, podcast. Um, and I would say we start with Sapphire now and this um, rebranding and renaming of the uh, um, around the Sapana Cloud world, let's say. You mean again? Yes. <laughs> And um, I think it's it's uh, pretty fair to say that um, um, this whole cloud story needs to be aligned. And uh, although um, it might be maybe difficult now to switch to other other terms, that you now try to understand a bigger story behind all of that. Yeah, I think this will be tremendous help to all the people who are interested in the SAP kind of cloud story. And also in the overall bigger SAP cloud story, yeah, which includes also a number of applications, a number of solutions and so on, and not only the development platform, which we are focused on. Yeah. So there are actually two um, nice blogs that have been written around um, this this topic. And uh, the first one is uh, actually one from uh, uh, Bjorn Gerke, who is actually uh, addressing uh, the questions, okay, what is Zapana Enterprise Cloud? What is Zapana Cloud Platform? And um, we will put this also, this link also as uh, part of the show notes. And the blog uh, is live since last week, right? Yes, yes. So it's uh, live since uh, May 11th. And also another blog from Ayas Kazi, uh, also talking about this, um, this same topic and um, explaining also the evolution and why this naming was done. And I think if you walk through these two blocks, you should have a very good understanding what Zapana Cloud Platform is. And uh, in case you have questions, of course, just go to one of these two blocks or go to both blocks and add a comment or raise questions there. And uh, and you won't be the first ones actually. There are quite some questions and comments already on both of the blocks. Yeah, yeah. So if you go there, yeah, just if you understood, that's fine. If not, yeah, just raise questions or maybe ping us. Um, you can also um, ping Krasi or myself in the on Twitter, we will provide the uh, um, Twitter handles at the end of the podcast. So I think that this is a um, a very good start to understand this whole rebranding and renaming. Um, what else about around Sapphire? Yeah, I think it's always good to have some customer testimonials. Oh, Danoni, right? Yep, Danoni. So um, in case you are interested in that, so um, if you are thinking about either buying or being a partner or becoming a partner. Um, there is actually some very nice um, video available. Again, we will put uh, the link here on um, on this uh, uh, podcast in, in the show notes, um, describing what Danoni had, um, what kind of experience Danoni had with Sapana Cloud. Um, and also, um, so th- there is one from the Sapphire now directly from the presentations they, they did. Mm, and uh, sounds great. also another one by JD Odie. So I think it was... Um, I think the Nonia were, were there already at the TechEd event last year. I mean, at that time they were just starting. Yeah, but now they're live or they're just about to, about to go to live, uh, go live with, okay. their, with their solution. Cool. So, and it's, so and it's nice to see things evolving yeah. in front of your ear. <laughs> yeah, your yeah, yeah, yeah. So things are really um, getting up uh, uh, to speed and yeah I just somehow this one uh, link doesn't work right now but you can also see the oh the Danone group talks Hana Cloud here from Dennis Howlett um, put in here on, on YouTube yeah you can get the link also on uh, the podcast show notes so um, Danone oh wait I have a nice one what about your success factors well, I mean, that uh, was that was a very interesting networking lunch 
thing. Yeah, so people keep on dating for lunch. And uh, that was a hot topic at uh, Sapphire as well. The colleagues that were there on the boat and also walking around got quite some questions on the topic of, of on the topic of how you extend um, Employee Central mm-hmm. with applications running on Sapphire Cloud. Philip has written a great blog describing there first of all uh, what is the general plot behind the extensions and whom those are um, targeted at. Also, a few use cases um, and different scenarios for using HANA Cloud for that. Um, I took the time a week ago to record a small video of the of the networking lunch integration, just to yeah keep the interest uh, and satisfy the questions of all the people that had no chance to participate on Sapphire. Yeah, uh, you'll also be able to find the video uh, in the links uh, as part of the blog post later yeah. on. Yeah, I just I just uh, open it up here in the video podcast in, in case you are watching this and you can go through uh, what what Crossy recorded uh, also with a, a screen capturing uh, thing. So, yeah, that you kind of get an, an idea how this how this works. And uh, the same the same scenario was shown at Subfire. So that's what we went there with and asked for feedback. We got plenty of it, mm-hmm. for which we're extremely grateful. Mm-hmm. And we're looking forward for the next steps on that uh, track here. Okay, okay. So I think maybe that's that's uh, enough for Sapphire now. I mean, I assume there are much more. No, there are many more details. I mean, there are a number of recaps that people have written about it. Um, yeah. And also, most probably, we'll have some follow-ups after Sapphire. Something to, to mention here, the um, Success Connect event, which took place last week. Mm-hmm. In Australia, um, right? In Australia, yeah, where again that scenario was very, uh, very well received. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are currently looking for some co-innovation activities with uh, partners from outside, yeah, to get them on board and um, get their external point of view and feedback. And yeah, we'll see what comes out of it. Yeah, cool. And again, here, I mean, if you see those blogs uh, from from Philip and from Crossy, here also the YouTube video. Just add a comment or raise questions, and uh, they are certainly happy to provide you with more details. Absolutely. So g- moving away from um, Sapphire now, um, maybe, maybe not too much away, um, because this was also um, announced in at, at Sapphire. So there are uh, on SCN the so-called ESPM scenario tutorials, which are really end-to-end. Um, tutorials that tell you how to connect really, for example, backend systems in your uh, on-premise world with cloud uh, systems and maybe uh, also how to extend the um, the um, scenarios you're running on-premise with functionality uh, sitting on top of that in the cloud. So pretty nicely done. Um, there is also, again, a block describing how the scenario works. Uh, also a little um, video explaining in a nutshell what you can do with them and how they work. Some customers are calling this uh, two-gear IT, basically having the uh, on-premise business critical systems uh, being upgraded once a year and then having rapid uh, rollout of new functionality using the cloud and yeah. getting it to more and more people. Yeah. Having kind of hybrid um, business models, right? So one, one uh, stable one with with. No, well, this has no means to say that the, the cloud is not stable. No, I mean, it's no, actually no, rock no, solid. no, no, no. I mean, what I meant is that the processes there in the on-premise world are fixed, right? Not not changing uh, yeah, too sure. much, and that you can run a, a faster speed on on the cloud with. Uh, Still reaching the same data, exactly, exposing exactly. it to the people out there in the field, yeah. being able to handle the required throughput and load with yeah. the SAP data centers. I think it's a, it's a great complement to the existing on-premise systems. Yeah. So in case you are interested, I mean, awesome work from the colleagues here. Uh, right now there are, I think, uh, six or seven um, scenarios that are documented. Um, if uh, the the one that I looked at in detail had 124 pages, so uh, not all text, but mostly screenshots mm-hmm. telling you step by step what to do, how to get the code, and um, it's really amazing what you can do with it. So you get everything up and running 
within a couple of minutes and not in a hello world kind of uh, thing, but really a complete application um, using um, a landscape which is on-premise, in the cloud, mixing them up, using it on a mobile phone and uh, describe very much in detail what you can do with it and where you can actually uh, derive some, some patterns, patterns that you can also use in your day-to-day -day work. My favorite one is the hybrid web shop, which explains how you can extract all the CRM data out of an existing system and yeah, get it out live yeah, yeah. instantly. Yeah, mine too, actually. <laughs> so we're looking at the same one. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, um, coming to the next topic, why t to use Zapana Cloud Platform at all? So we had um, an, uh, um, a newsletter series in the past weeks and out of that we uh, created uh, a list of um, of uh, use cases that actually explain when to use um, when it doesn't make sense to use Zapana Cloud um, and you can actually get an understanding um, what the differentiator is for, uh, for using uh, Zapana Cloud there is a, a, to, uh, a block that, that I wrote summarizing that you find it also in the uh, developer center uh, let's see, I'm just going here to the um, web page of our Zapana Cloud Platform Developer Center. You can read it, read it very uh, easily uh, with the link developers.sap.com slash cloud. Um, I think, ah, here, it's uh, right now it's featured and actually showing you, okay, well you can use uh, your Java skills explaining what the platform is about, that it's that it's open and based on standards, how you can connect to your end users like on mobile phones, mobile devices, using it for B2B scenarios. And we will grow this, um, this list of um, examples, uh, how you can leverage Zapana Cloud plat Platform. So in case you're interested in asking yourself or maybe your boss uh, wants to know uh, why this is useful, you just can refer to this, this blog. Is there any source code as part of the blocks? Of course not. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, but the, the source code, that's actually a very good one. Um, not sure if you guys know, if you go to sap.github.io, you will find a lot of source code that you can um, simply fork from, from GitHub, including also the ESPM um, scenarios in this ESPM reference application. Um, in the video that is included in the corresponding tutorial, you will find that hint too. But as you see here, you have much more um, source code that you so can... So you mean that the complete apps are available here so people can simply take them, import them in Eclipse and deploy yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, yes. You can click here on fork and uh, um, it will bring you to, here in this case, to the ESPM uh, cloud scenarios. Um, you click here on copy to, cl copy to clipboard for the GitHub repository. You paste it into your Eclipse with uh, installed Git and Maven, and you get it. Awesome. Yeah. In, and not to forget, of course, the uh, source code also in the SDK from Zapana Cloud Platform, right? Um, so if you download the SDK, you can get uh, also a lot of sample code in the um, sample folder, right? Yep. It's yeah. exactly there. There is a samples folder as part of SDK, which contains the same source code. Yeah. And um, and I'm just looking for another one which which is just coming out of uh, um, our world here. Uh, it's not listed up here yet, but I assume it will come um, soon. It's called the Enterprise Granny. So a blog uh, that um, Matthias Steiner wrote from our team, explaining how you can take, uh, let's say, an easy um, address book application, I think, written in Java. There was a blog post about that a few months ago. Yes, but uh, actually what Matthias is doing now, he's taking that and integrate and showing how you can integrate that into Zapana Cloud Platform. So really level le leveraging the capabilities of the platform and yeah. not just having a dump uh, few pages, yeah. simple web application. Yeah, and Matthias is also referring to the um, uh, to the blog that you mean here, um, which is called "Which Freaking 
platform as a service should I use? <laughs> well, there were some security vulnerabilities in the original app, I can recall back then. Yeah, but I mean, the, the, the intent of that app was not really to use it in the enterprise no, world, sure, right? So what course. we are but doing... You know, if you see security... Yeah, I mean. so, but um, if you look through uh, Matthias' blog, it uh, will be explained how you can actually do that. And it's, if I remember well, it's a series of blocks. Uh, the one that I just opened up here is the part one. There is no spoon, but a fork. Very funny. Hmm. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, just, just follow Matthias with his, um, with his blog series about this in case you're interested. It really shows you how you can take, let's say, a non-enterprise application and uh, really make it an enterprise-ready application. Sounds great. I think there are many examples and the need for that is definitely in place. Yeah, which... Uh, actually um, brings us from the what's up uh, section of this podcast to the what's next. There is something next? Yes, 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 yes. So um, there are a couple of events coming um, to us in the next couple of uh, weeks. So um, where we will also talk about Zapana Cloud. So the first one here is in, um, in, J in June 1st, the SAP Inside Track in Hamburg. Isn't that the... Children Day? Children Day? What do you mean Children Day? <laughs> it's the International Day of Children there. Everybody drives with their uh, lights lit. Okay. I will tell Renald Witwer about that so that he is aware of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so just talk to him today and uh, we will actually present um, to the participants something around Sapana Cloud Platform. So what it is to give people who are not maybe... Uh, um, too much in detail into SAP, uh, what this platform can do, what it is about. And um, in case you wanna, you wanna go there, yeah, just register. Um, the link to this event is also part of the show notes here, the SAP Inside Track in Hamburg. You can go to SCN and search for that. Um, and um, yeah, so pretty nice event um, in, the, in, in Hamburg and it's a very nice uh, place to go to. Hamburg is a nice city. Yep, it is. <laughs> I can confirm. Um, the next one, the Karlsruhe Entwicklertage. Certainly something interesting for uh, people here in Germany, because as far as I know, uh, the conference will be held in, in German. Uh, but nevertheless... Oh, that's a pity. Yeah, but you know, it happens that if you're in Germany, people speak German. Mm, <laughs> some of them do. <laughs> okay. So... Um, we will be there um, at the um, at this Karlsruhe Entwickler Tag. It will go from June 5th to 7th. And we will give um, a presentation on the platform and on the um, on the tutorial day. Also give people um, a, a means to actually try out the, um, the platform, which you can do, by the way, also independently from an event. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, just go to developers.sap.com slash cloud and you can register for the free trial. Okay, so it's still there. It's still there. It will remain. Okay. Um, so, uh, so that's another event where, where you can go. And in case you are in, in Paris, on uh, something between June 7th and 8th, you can go to the dot .scale uh, event. Actually, a pretty interesting event uh, with some very cool speakers from all kinds of different companies. You see here from WordPress, somebody, OpenStack, um, from, from Google, from uh, Dot .cloud. And um, SAP will also hold a workshop there on, um, on um, June 8th, actually. It will, it's, there is a se separate workshop day at this event. It, uh, it's happening in Paris. And uh, our workshop will go on uh, June 8th from 2 p.m. till 6 p.m. People will get hands on the platform, will be able to play with the platform, try out things. So um, so it's all questions answered kind of event, right? It's, it's an event like um, you, you can put your foot on the ground okay. <laughs> so that you know what the, um, um, the, the platform can do. And I mean, it will mainly depend on the participants. If we have people who go, want to go, yeah. go deep, we go deep, right? Okay. Um, but it will mainly depend what we can uh, provide there to the participants and what they, what they want. Um, and now for our audience in Italy. 
it's maybe it's already too late because I heard the event is sold out. The first SAP Code Jam in Italy, in Rome, happening on June 12th. Um, so we're using the, the Code Jam event format. It's a five to six hours hands-on format for a specific SAP technology. As I said, this time in Rome. Uh, organized um, by SAP and Technis Blue, and namely Patricia Rossi. Um, so she really took care of getting people on board. And right now we have 50 participants, which is the maximum for this event. And it's sold out. So, so it's again, like depends on the audience, how deep you go there. Yeah, right. So it will be um, half an hour introduction into the platform in general on PowerPoint basis, let's say. And uh, the rest of the time then will be really hands on on the platform, so you will be told how to um, install everything, how to set up everything, and um, I hope that within a couple of minutes you have your first app up and running. So uh, most probably I will take one of the ESPM scenarios mm -hmm. to to the event and let people look into it. And from the format, it really then again depends uh, what people want to see. So uh, we can become um, broad, broad by trying to ex explain the whole scenario, but also um, certainly can cover specific questions uh, regarding, okay, how do I make this run on an Android phone? How do I do it on a BlackBerry? How do I do it on an iOS phone? BlackBerry, is somebody using that? Yes, hey, but wait a second, the new Blackberries are pretty nice. You haven't still yeah, had a chance to test yeah, them. Yeah, I, I'm one of the last Indogems I was in Copenhagen, there were actually guys from BlackBerry and uh, they had a very nice device there, so which was at that point in time just about to be um, released, and it was it looked pretty nice, and it felt very I don't know, um, not so cold like the the iPhone, okay. but it was re really nice experience to have a BlackBerry which somehow feels cooler like an iPhone. Okay, so you mean people shouldn't really um, sign those guys off their list of devices to try out in the future yes yes i mean they, they still have uh, their issues with multiple um ides for their uh for their platform but i think that they will fix that so okay someone but looking forward yeah me too me too um yeah so in case you are interested um ju just check if you want if you still can register so maybe somebody uh, d didn't have time and uh, unregistered so uh, another uh, spot is open but will certainly be interesting to to go there and to get your hands on the platform and just two days later we'll have uh, another InnoJam um, SAP InnoJam in the Netherlands so do you know InnoJam? Of course I do it's my favorite event 48 Why? hours of coding right? 30 hours non-stop yes okay so but it's not depends on how much you sleep actually yeah, you, you don't sleep during this event. That's what I had in mind. <laughs> so um, an event organized um, by SAP and the Dutch SAP user group VNSG. It happens uh, on June 14th. You see, uh, in, in the uh, uh, video podcast, you can actually also see the registration link. And you will not only get your hands on... Um, Zapana Cloud, but on much more technology. So I see here uh, HANA is there, Sybase Unwired Platform, SAP UI5, NetWeaver Gateway, um, and also, of course, SAP, Net, um, SAP HANA Cloud Platform. Oh, we need to fix that. Um, so you will get in touch with those technologies, and um, depending on the, on the um, business case uh, or the um, um, design thinking um, outcome that you will get, a design thinking prototype. Design thinking is also a pretty nice, interesting, uh, um, how you say, it's not a process. It's not a silver bullet, though. I yeah, mean, yeah, but, but it's a way to look at things, I mean, to, to get, again, feedback from customers, figure yeah. out actually what they need instead of assuming what they might use. Yeah, but an additional, yeah, an additional thing you can learn there, and part of that also is up on a cloud platform. So just in case you want to have um, 30 hours no sleep, just go to this event. <laughs> it's pretty fun. So uh, sounds pretty intriguing. Yeah, and the last um, the last event I have here on my list for June, you mean? 
For June, yeah, yeah. So we don't go beyond that. Beyond that yet. So maybe at, as part of the next episode. For sure. So the um, Eclipse Demo Camp Kepler in Waldorf. So June 26. Uh, in case you are around Waldorf and you want to see what people are doing here at SAP with Eclipse and the new um, Eclipse 4.3 release, um, just come to this demo camp here in Waldorf. Um, if you want to register, yeah, just go to the show notes and you will get also the link to that. And um, we will show interesting things we are doing here at SAP. We will also have um, um, very good speakers here during the demo camp, uh, including also Mike Milink uh, Milinkovic. So, um, so he's from the Eclipse Foundation. He's the head of Eclipse Foundation, actually. Exactly. And, um, and also from other companies, uh, also including SAP. So just come. Um, it's, I think it starts somewhere at 4 or 5 p.m. Uh, on June 26. Oh, on 5 p.m. I see here. Uh, till 8 p.m. including happy hour, whatever that means. Um, oh, this means that the ending is somehow open. <laughs> yeah, you get free food, you get um, free drinks, and a lot of opportunity to get in touch with others who have... Um, also interested uh, interest in the Eclipse world. So in case you want to go there or you know somebody, um, just go to the uh, um, Eclipse Demo Camp um, link that we provide, register, and you st we still have uh, speaking slots open, by the way. So in case you want to um, provide uh, a speech here, just um, join the others. I think it's 15 minutes um, speech for, for everybody. And um, should certainly be interesting. For sure. Last year it was great. How many people have been there last year? Around 100 something. Yeah, yeah. we expect the same amount, even more, I think, this time. Okay, what else to, um, to mention? Do you have anything? Yeah, nothing in particular. I mean, as I said, there are many things ongoing. Yeah. Looking forward to see how... Um, how we can accommodate the feedback that we've received after, after Sapphire and the other ongoing events. Looking forward to get the feedback that you're going to gather through the events that you just mentioned. Yeah, and also, I mean, also it would be interesting to hear from you guys uh, what you think about this episode of this podcast and the podcast in general. If you have maybe specific topics you want to get uh, covered in this podcast, just let me know. My Twitter handle is Ruinogera, R-U-I-N-O-G-U-U. N-O-G-U-E-I-R-A. What is your one? It's Ivo Yeti. Much <laughs> easier to spell and much easier to... Ruin Nogueira is a very common name in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Ivo Yeti is absolutely <laughs> uncommon. I don't think there are too many of those. Okay, very good. So um, just let us know. Um, ping us on Twitter. Use SCN and or send us a direct message there. So um, that's all for now. So thanks for you guys. Um, that you listened and um, just let us know whenever you have questions and see you in one of the next episodes. See you next time. Bye. Bye.